Hello everyone and a very blessed Easter to you, even in this most challenging and strange of times. A verse from our Gospel reading today from Matthew 28, and suddenly there was an earthquake. We're not used to earthquakes here in the UK, and nor are we used to the famines, civil wars or plagues of locusts that affect other parts of the globe. That doesn't protect us from domestic earthquakes, of course, from events that shake the very ground that we stand on. Nor does it shelter us from communal earthquakes, like the recent flooding in our country that so devastated the lives of many of our villages and towns. But the experience of a national, indeed a global earthquake, has left us all reeling as COVID-19 sweeps its way around the world, bringing death in its wake and turning the lives of thousands of millions, you and I included, upside down. In disaster movies, of which there have been many in recent years, the threat of an alien invasion, say, tends to bring out the very worst in people, leading to dog-eats-dog behaviour and the breakdown of civil society. In reality, though, it more often brings out the best. Those who work in our National Health Service deserve applause every moment of every day of every week. So do those who work in our care homes and schools and those who collect our post and our rubbish. Within hours of the NHS calling for volunteers, more than half a million people had signed up. And even the experiences of social isolation and social distancing have often resulted in far more consideration for others as streets have formed WhatsApp groups and churches have run food banks and even a walk with the dog has led to long conversations with complete strangers carried out the statutory two metres apart. And that's not the whole story, of course, and earthquakes of all kinds can bring out the worst in people as well as the best, the hoarding instinct alongside the sharing instinct. But it does provide a glimmer of hope at a time when sickness, anxiety and loneliness stalk the land, when mounting death tolls dominate our news headlines and when churches are locked on the most holy day of the Christian year. And suddenly we read, there was a great earthquake. There were two earthquakes recorded in Matthew's Gospel. One takes place as Jesus dies on the cross, another here on resurrection morning. And both events less than 48 hours apart shook the ground in more ways than one. For Jesus' disciples, of course, the Friday earthquake brought their whole world crashing about their ears. Jesus, their shepherd, guardian, friend, their prophet, priest and king, being cruelly tried, brutally mocked, savagely beaten, nailed to a cross and left to die. And had that been the only earthquake recorded during that extraordinary weekend, it would have fallen into the category of a domestic tragedy. A small group of men and women putting their faith in yet another failed Messiah. A footnote in the ancient history books, if remembered at all. But it was the Sunday earthquake and its aftershocks that changed all that. An event so astonishing, so groundbreaking, so universal in its impact that the little domestic tragedy of two days earlier was transformed into a movement that has changed the world. Some of the details of that day, admittedly, are a little confusing. Such is often the case when you gather a number of eyewitness accounts to an extraordinary event. But there were two things on which those witnesses were absolutely united, in fact willing to stake their very lives. First, that the tomb in which Jesus had been laid was empty. And secondly, that a significant number of people, more than 500 women and men in total, had gone on to meet with the risen Christ. And stake their lives they did, as many of those witnesses went on to face the most brutal of executions at the hands of the Roman authorities, with just one song on their lips, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. So back to the world of COVID-19, of self-isolation and self-distancing, of face masks 
and ventilators and intensive care units and mortuaries. And perhaps we might think it's almost indecent to celebrate Easter at quite such a challenging time. Quite frankly, we're just not in the mood. But while Easter 2020 might be understandably lacking in some of the normal joys of spring, and while this season demands of us a seriousness of purpose alongside practical courage and compassion, and while 10,000 locked churches might make an apparent mockery of the words of George Herbert, the church with psalms must shout, no door can keep them out, there's another sense in which the Easter message has never been more relevant than it is today. A fact demonstrated by 10,000 makeshift recorded or live streamed services from vicarages and deaneries and presbyteries and manses all around the nation, which are commanding far larger audience figures than ever before. There is, after all, one reality that COVID-19 brings into sharp focus, that one day you and I will die. It may be soon, it may be many decades off, but one day it will happen. And here's the relevance of that Easter earthquake, which goes far beyond the experience of a small bunch of people in first century Palestine. That in the words of St. Paul, death has lost its sting. Or as he puts it elsewhere, dear friends, let us not grieve as those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and even so, God will bring with him those who have died. Then we will always be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. It remains true, of course, that Easter 2020 will be a quite different experience from the Easter's that we've grown to know and love. It remains true that many of our cherished family traditions and church traditions will have to wait for another year. It remains true that many of us will find it hard to summon up the joy of Easter or to sing those triumphant hymns with the usual enthusiasm. But whether proclaimed with beaming faces or as an act of stubborn faith, the message of those first disciples which spread like a benevolent virus around the world also remains true and hopeful and astonishingly relevant as together we face this earthquake of our own. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God bless you all and your loved ones too.